Okay, I got it. Did you know that statistically, it is impossible to walk through walls? Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are talking about The Boy and the Heron, the highly anticipated Studio Ghibli film. And if you know me, you know that I'm a big fan of Studio Ghibli. And of course, this one, as, as many of them are, is directed by Hayao Miyazaki who uh, before the film came out claimed it was his last film but now he's like mm, actually it's not anymore I changed my mind and this time we follow the story of Mahito a young boy who after his mom uh, dies him and his father go to live with his stepmom and while living with his stepmom they find a magical tower which they claim that a great grand uncle built but in reality fell from the sky and inside the tower is Weird occurrences, magical beings, ghouls, monsters, weird things, all things that, you know, are in mysterious towers that fall from the sky, right? As we've all, all seen. And Mahito must navigate himself through this tower in order to find his lost stepmom with the aid of a gray heron. Yeah, if it sounds like a weird film, um, it definitely is. With that being said, it's also a really fun time. Um, the trailers definitely don't do this film justice they make it seem like it's a completely different film than what it actually is which is not a bad thing just different right now that's not to say the film is perfect because in reality it's not one curious thing that I, I that I found was the plot itself so if you guys don't know uh, my boys and I we do this uh, we do this podcast every week called the usual rejects where we talk about film and TV news please subscribe we really need it but Christian aka this guy right here leads a lot of Stephen King and um, specifically uh, he made a, an interesting comparison um, between the boy and the heron and the dark tower here take a listen it was just like uh, it kind of ripped off this Stephen King thing that I really uh, that I'm, in, that I'm like starting to get into a lot well like I know like the basics of basically the there's this book series of his called the dark tower and uh-huh. it, like ripped off like in fact a lot of what like ends up happening is literally almost like verbatim a ripoff there's even like a point where like uh there's even a point in this where i was like they didn't they didn't like when i when i finished when we finished the movie and i was like rethinking about it i was like they did not just do that there's like a roses are very symbolic in Mm -hmm. the dark tower books and I kid you fucking not, for no fucking reason at all. Like, no, and this is, again, what I'm talking about. Is like, there's just so many things in this movie that just make no fucking sense. For no fucking reason at all, a rose just falls from the sky and, like, just shatters or, like, explodes or whatever. Like, for yeah. no fucking context. Weird, huh? I also have a nitpick with the title itself. So, the original title of the film translates to How Do You Live, which, in the movie itself is the book that Mahito's mother writes to him before she dies. But for some reason, when it came over to the States, it, the movie itself was retitled to The Boy and the Heron, which uh, I don't really get because the Heron is more of a secondary character than he is as a protagonist. And to label Mahito as just the boy and then the Heron I don't know. I don't know if it's 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 a bit of a weird thing, especially considering especially considering the fact that the, the gray heron doesn't even show up for a good portion of the film, and yeah, he is the the guide, the guide, but he really isn't always there for Mahito. He shows up more so towards the beginning of the film and the end of the film, but he isn't there for the middle part. You know what I mean? But we move away from that. But nitpicks and strange coincidences aside, I think it's a great watch. This is an odd film, but in a good way. Now, if this, if if you've never seen a Ghibli film and you you're thinking about this being your first experience, I would not recommend that. Like I said, this is a weird film. It's not for everyone, mainly because of the tower aspect of the film. I mean, it's it's uh, the film is is fun. It's great. Once you get into the tower stuff and you understand what's going on, it's good. But the issue with it is that they don't explain the rules and logistics of the tower till way later in the movie. And so for a good portion of the film, you're either lost or you're just there for the vibes. But once you do know, once the tower works, everything kind of clicks and you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. That's why this and this is here and so on and so forth. But 
Like Ghibli films go, the world building is phenomenal as per usual. This time the film incorporates something that we haven't really touched upon in Ghibli films, which is space. And I'm kind of surprised that more Ghibli films don't touch upon space, aliens, stuff like that. And they don't really go too deep into it, but they, they make it a point that the tower in the film comes from space. So, and I think that's, uh, that's a bit of an interesting element. And then later at the end of the film, when the tower is starting to collapse, you do see some some bits here and there of space, which 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 in my opinion is is pretty unique for for Ghibli as a brand. And of course, it's a visual masterpiece, man. What did you expect? I mean, anything with fire in this movie looks. They use this very interesting swoosh effect on the fire to make the fire really feel intense. And gosh, it's so cool, and it makes. It makes the scenes feel even stronger and more impactful. So, yeah, I mean, what do you expect with a Ghibli film? Your, your, your blues and your greens are going to pop out. It's going to look beautiful, like any Ghibli film, like I said. And just like any Ghibli films, you fall in love with the characters. I mean, this time around, Mahito's a bit of an introverted character, so he doesn't... For, for the, the beginning portion of the film, he doesn't really talk all that much. Even so, within the first, like, 10, 15 of the minutes of the film, you already feel for him. We see his him trying to save his mom and fail very much so, but and so and so because of this, you want you want to care about Mahito. You want him to succeed, and and he has these constant dreams about his mother, and it's kind of sad. And for that reason, uh, the stepmom is also a really good character because she comes into Mahito's life at a very low point, and she's just trying her best, man. She she's just trying to take care of him. You could tell she cares about Mahito, and because she cares about him we care about her and so once she gets lost we want to find her the heron itself i mean he is in the title is an okay character honestly he didn't really resonate with me all that much he is where we are told that he is a constant liar and i don't know i just didn't I didn't I really didn't respond with him as a character and his story so by the end of the story once he says his goodbyes with Mahito you don't really miss him all that much maybe that's just me I wonder how other people feel I don't know what the general consensus on on him is but that's just how I felt about him but the standout for me was Kiriko so she begins the story as an old lady who lives and works at the estate that that Mahito and his family are at right but once he enters the tower we get uh, a younger version of her and and one thing I should probably know um it, they establish in the film that that once you leave the tower you will eventually forget your experience in the tower and so that's um that's just just something to know that's why Kiriko during the beginning of the film didn't want Mahito to enter it because she didn't actually remember but we see a young Kiriko and damn is she a powerhouse of a woman man she is stern strict but she is a caring woman she puts Mahito to work but she also provides for him and she gives him the guidance that he needs to, to navigate through this tower yeah I mean her inclusion was just great overall now if there is one thing I were to change about this film, it would probably be, be the way the tower works. I mean, as I mentioned, they, 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 they explain to the viewer that the way the tower works at the end of the film, but I think it would have been a little bit easier for audiences to understand had it been more towards the beginning of the film so that we know like what we're not really what we're expecting, but so that we're not just lost for a good portion of the film. Now, with that being said, I think the tower parts were some of the best portions of the film because the first uh, half of the film is is a slow burn and there's nothing wrong with that but once you get into the tower portion that's when you get into the more creative storytelling that we get with a lot of these Ghibli films and that stuff was really fun and and it puts Mahito in an environment which he's not accustomed to so all in all um like I said the boy and the heron is a fun film if you haven't if you haven't seen, a couple months ago, I did a film uh, ranking all the Ghibli films that I've watched, even though I say all, there's a lot of them. I just did my top 10. I don't know why I said all. I'm sorry for lying to you. See, I'm starting to turn into the heron. But now where would this film go on that list? In all honesty, it's not in my top 10. And my top 10 is a very, a very strict list. 
and this doesn't really break it. Now that's not to say that this is a bad film. I think this is a fantastic film all in all. I think as a film, I gave it an eight out of 10. It's, there's, there's nothing too wrong with it. But of course we are here to nitpick. This is a great film, but I have to be con constructive. I mean, I have to be critical about it, but hey, if you haven't seen it already, I definitely check it out. If you've seen Ghibli, if you know anything about Ghibli, even if you've ever only seen one Ghibli film, I would definitely recommend it. If you've never seen a Ghibli film, I'd probably say go watch something else. They're on Max. Uh, you can watch a couple of Max. I know Princess Mononoke is there. Uh, Nausicaa is there, I think. Uh, so yeah, but come and then and then after that, come back and watch this film because this is a great film all in all. And I had a great time and I think you'll have a great time too. And if you have seen it, let me know down in the comments. I want to see what you guys are saying. And as per usual, thank you, thank you, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch me talk about a weird kid with an even weirder bird. And as per usual, see you space cowboys. There's my thumb.